Hi everyone, my name is Gagan Singh and I am a leadership trainer, communications coach and a recruitment specialist and I am back today to give you some tips on how to become successful in group discussions. Now whenever I start my group discussion courses, be it corporations or universities or colleges, I always ask my students to try and give one word to describe group discussion and believe you me more often than not the analogy which students give is comparable to something like Royal Rumble of World Wrestling Federation. Yes, that's the image which most students carry about group discussion that it's akin to 10 or 12 wrestlers fighting against each other pulling each other down, exchanging blows till there is just the last person standing and to win it's essential to defeat others. It's in this misconception that the entire process of developing a fear psychosis towards GD starts in their minds which makes them defensive, negative and therefore when they are in a real life GD situation their performance is something which is not worthy of being selected by a recruiter. The issue with group discussion, my friends, is that it's not really a royal rumble where you have to defeat others. And to prove that point, I like to give you a simple illustration that in most of the group discussions, whenever you do that in corporations or in colleges, there are instances when one entire group, suppose a group of 10, all 10 get selected. On the other hand, there are groups where the entire groups get rejected. What does this prove? It simply proves that in a GD, you are not necessarily competing among each other, but you are actually competing with other groups too. Therefore, the group which wins is the one which has a very constructive, fruitful and a positive GD. Why is that? For that, let me ask you a simple question. Why do you think organizations choose group discussion as a medium to evaluate students? And the answer for that lies in a simple fact that most of the organizations day in day out they are having discussions internally almost endlessly more and more the big organizations are shifting towards team based decision making and in these situations where in the same teams you are going to discuss day in day out different topics the one thing which organizations want is professionals who may have disagreement but that disagreement should not turn into dislike. It is this one single thing which corporations want in their employees and your recruiters are very curiously trying to seek that out in you. So with that being said, I must also add a very important caveat that depending on what post are you being recruited for, there may be certain fine differences in what the recruiters are trying to look at you as a participant of a group discussion. But here, right in this video, I am going to give you five C's. The five C's are number one, chemistry. Number two, communication. Number three, creativity. Number four, collaboration. And number five, contribution. Yes, the five C's. Please write them down. And now allow me to explain them one by one. What is chemistry? In simple terms, it means your ability to build a rapport with the group members very quickly. Why is it needed? Because in your real life corporate situations, no matter you're in sales, audit, marketing, finance, you would have to deal in complex situations, sometimes with well-known people and sometimes with unfamiliar people. How quickly can you become a central part of the group? How quickly can you make rapo a feeling of likability towards your team members will to a very great extent define how successful you are. How do you build chemistry in a group? The answer is body language. You use positive body language like smile, leaning forward, looking at the person very carefully, right kind of hand movements. I'm going to be launching a complete video on body language. So this is point number one about chemistry. Let's go to point number two, which is communication. The second C of communication is often the most poorly understood. The most misunderstood C is communication. The problem is 
when most students think that communication is all about speaking, talking, my dear friends, it's exactly the opposite. The three starting rules of communication are listening, listening and listening. How attentively, with what kind of focus are you listening to others will actually play a very big role on how do you reply back to them. So remember a framework called ALERT framework, A-L-E-R-T, where A is your ability to appreciate, your ability to acknowledge. L stands for listening. E stands for empathizing, your ability to show emotions to make a bond. R, the fourth one, is then responding. And finally, T is transforming yourself to tactfully try to synergize with them. Remember the C of communication very carefully because organizations want great communicators. And it's not just about speaking. It's about the alert framework. It's about listening. Next, let's go to the third C, which is creativity. As I had explained in my previous video, group discussions are an important test to see how quickly can a participant come up with new ideas, especially when there is a stalemate. So let's take an example that we are having a discussion whether demonetization was a great move or a bad move. So there is half of the group which is saying it was a great move. Half of the group is dead against it. And there's a stalemate and there is a fracas going on over there. And if you enter at that point and say, friends, let's try to look at demonetization in a more holistic perspective. It's possible that some of the negatives of uh, economy angle were definitely things which didn't go well with demonetization. Some other aspects as a deterrent were great. But then a lot of times it is also said that great moves are those which actually eliminated the happening of bad moves. So demonetization, having successfully been implemented, acted as an eliminator for a lot of terrorist acts which never happened. So the fact they didn't happen doesn't mean that they were not being planned. So I would want my group to look at demonetization from that perspective. Now the way you introduce an entirely new angle to a GD is a test of your creativity. And this is something that corporates have a great penchant for. So show creativity, bring new ideas, avoid stalemate situation through your very interesting suggestions to lead the group, give them the new direction. The fourth C is collaboration. Now what is collaboration? In real life company situations, you will have disagreements, but eventually you have to evolve a consensus. To give an example, suppose your organization is planning to set up a new office in India and the debate is whether to set it at Bangalore or say Kolkata and they hand over to your team and your team is having a group discussion. Now, howsoever you may like it or not, your group will have to give a recommendation to the management that, hey boss, let's open it at Kolkata or vice versa. Hey, let's open it at Bangalore. So this kind of real life situation demands that you must use tactful approach to come to a consensus, compromise, do not be intransigent on your thoughts, but rather appreciate the viewpoint of others and collaborate with them. In a real life GD situation, what it could mean is if there are two sides which are having different view, when you intervene, you may try to take the positive of both and try to find the mid path. Be cautious not to compromise on principles, but short of that, you could always be coming up with compromise suggestions so that consensus building happens. And finally, the fifth C is all about contribution. Contribution is a reflection of your never say die attitude. No matter your GD is for 10 minutes, 20 minutes or 30 minutes. As I had told in my last video, the golden rule for your speaking is that the number of minutes which have been allocated divided by number of members plus alpha is your speaking time. But be careful, your contribution is not just your speaking, your contribution is your active presence, your eye contact, your communicating, your nodding, your looking and your connecting with others throughout the GD shows that you are a live, active participant. Doing this as a contributor will make sure that even if you were not an initiator, even if you were not a summarizer, your facilitation in that entire GD duration will make you one of the candidates to be shortlisted.
So with these words, I like to wrap up the summary. The point that you need to remember, the important things, the five C's that you need to follow are number one, chemistry. Through your body language, build association with others in a very quick and short period of time. Number two, your communication skills, which is all about listening, about empathizing and about speaking smoothly and in a tactful manner. Number three is your creativity, which is all about coming in and new ideas, right? When the GD seems to be stuck up at some point, your new direction can give a new purpose to the entire discussion. Number four is collaboration, that extra effort to compromise and build a consensus. And finally, Number five is contribution, your alert, presence, and your ideas into the group discussion through the entire journey of 10, 20, or 30 minutes. So I would want all of you to follow these five C's, and I assure you, if you follow them suitably, you will win a special appreciation from every recruiter. So with these words, here's Kagan Singh signing off for the day, and may the power of winning it persona ever be with you. Thank you.